guys, today I'm going to show you how I make our current favorite chocolate chip cookie. These are them. They're the perfect little bite if you ask me. They're delectable. They're delicious. They're 100% plant-based um, and they're also nut-free. You can also make them soy-free depending on what butter alternative you purchase. They're delicious. It's a really simple recipe that's easy to follow, quick to, quick to whip up, and definitely a favorite in this house. So if you'd like to see how I make them, keep watching. Here are the ingredients you need for this recipe. One and a quarter cups all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cornstarch, half a cup of your plant-based butter alternative of choice. I use the Earth Balance Vegan Buttery Sticks. They work great. Half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, and then I use yeah. A quarter cup of a plant-based milk alternative. I prefer to use oat milk because it has the closest consistency to milk in my opinion. It also gives a nice flavor to the cookies. One teaspoon of vanilla and then half a cup of your favorite vegan friendly chocolate chips. I love the Enjoy Life brand. They're great. Um, and then get all your tools out. I've got my baking, drying, cooling racks, I think they're called. I use my mixer for this. You can definitely use a handheld mixer or do it by hand, just like any cookie recipe. Um, still pats, utensils, we're ready to bake. So the first thing I've done is preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I pulled my stick of butter out of the fridge a couple hours ago to have it come up to room temperature. It's half a cup of butter. And then we have one cup of packed light brown sugar and a quarter cup of granulated sugar. And I just beat that on low for a few minutes. While that's beating, I mix up my dry ingredients. I have one and a quarter cup all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And I just whisk this to incorporate it. So I'm hoping you can see from this angle that the butter and the sugars have pretty much fully incorporated. I'm going to scrape down the bowl and beat them up one more time just to make sure. Looks good. At this point, I'm going to add in my vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla. Got a little bit of a stir. And then I bring the mixer down to the lowest speed so it's on its version of stir. And I'll start adding in the flour just a little bit at a time, one scoopful at a time. I feel like adding the flour in slowly like this just helps the dough not get overworked and adds to a more tender cookie bite. So I'll add in about half the flour and then I'll come in with the plant milk, the oat milk in this case. I'm about halfway through adding in the dry ingredients so now I'm just going to pour in my oat milk. You can use soy, almond, whatever dairy alternative you want. Open up. Just fine, just have, might have a slightly different texture and consistency but the proportions should still work fine for baking. I've left this mix for just a, really just a minute after it's fully incorporated, just to make sure. And then I'm just going to do it one quick scrape down, and then we'll add in our chocolate chips. At this point, I add in my half cup of chocolate chips. I prefer the mini because they're little cookies, and also with little ones. It's just I don't know, I prefer the mini chips <laughs> with the little cookies. That's what I do. Okay, that only takes a second, and then we are ready to scoop. Here is our cookie dough, delectable, no raw eggs. So, something to think about. I use a tablespoon to get even, evenly measured cookies, and all I do is I scoop and then slide it up the side of the bowl. So I've got a prox, I mean it's not like, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but. And then I just use my fingers, scoop it out, roll into a ball. This is a great thing to do with kids because um, they can definitely 
do any step of this, really. It's very easy recipe, and it's always fun to roll cookie dough, isn't it? Um, and then I just fill these up and pop them in the oven. When I make this recipe, it generally yields 32 cookies with one tablespoon measurements. So now we're gonna stick them in the oven, and I bake them for anywhere from 11 to 13 minutes, depending on the day and the humidity, it all changes. Um, but I just kind of eyeball it and I rotate them halfway through. So I put them in for six minutes and now I'm going to flip them and put them in for another five and then I'll reassess at that point to see if they need one to two more minutes. At this point, I just put the timer on for five minutes to just make sure that they don't get over done and I'll check them at five and if they need another minute or two, I'll leave them in and we'll have to see. It kind of depends on the day. So I ended up leaving them in for six minutes additional, so for a total of 12 minutes. You know when they're done, when they're lightly golden brown and nice looking. They're already coming down a little. They come out of the oven real puffy and then they settle down. So I'll let them cool on the sheets just until they're cool enough to handle. And I love the silk hats because I can just pull those over off of the um, cookie sheets and onto the drying racks. And then eventually I'll pull them off the silk hats altogether to cool completely before storing. And here they are, all done and glorious. They have a really nice bite to them. They, um, depending on how long you leave them in the oven, it can be a little bit crispy on the inside, but they're really moist and chewy on the inside. To me, they're just the ultimate chocolate chip cookie. They taste so, so good. My kids love them, my husband loves them, my family loves them. They don't last long in our house. And they're a nice small bite. They're not a huge cookie. Um, so that's, that's nice if you just want like a little, little bite of something.